Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So I've got Pixel 3 XL here, Pixel 3 over here, and they're in front of me today because, well, Android Q just dropped. So I've got Android Q Beta 1. This is the first version of Android Q that's publicly available. I've got it up and running on the 3 XL. I've still got Pi over here on the 3, so we can do a little bit of comparison. And that's pretty much it. We want to show you what's new, if there's anything interesting. Now, I will I will tell you up front that there's not a lot of really, really exciting changes here. This is the first version. We weren't expecting a ton. Uh, but there's still some stuff to point out. So let's, let's do this. Let's take a first look at Android Q. So I think I'll start just by showing you that, again, not, not a lot has changed here. The UI is going to look very much just like Android Pie. So if I swipe up here, my app switcher looks the same. My app drawer looks the same. My notification area pretty much looks the same including quick tiles if I go into settings all of this pretty much the same too the the styling of these tips up here is a little bit different but for the most part everything's laid out identical we do have a new privacy section which I'll come back to location and security have been separated but that's kind of it again it's it's very pie ish uh, I am running Android Q which you can see here however if I tap in there and go to the Easter egg it's it's the pie Easter egg so it's kind of like a late build of pie with some Q stuff going on I, I don't know either way not super exciting but we're still talking about it you will notice a back button here also we think in a future build we'll get a swipe gesture that'll get rid of that back button but the gesture nav is just the same right now as it was uh, on pi so what's new though uh the biggest changes google's talked a lot about uh being open and and upfront with you in terms of uh, security app permissions things like that and we've, we've seen some of this in a leaked build so what i mean by that is if you open an app now and it requests a permission this is kind of what you get you get a giant box that says hey this app wants to access something this one's location and it says do you want to allow this all the time or maybe only when you're using the app or deny it altogether i think you understand the importance there if an app you're not using is trying to access something maybe you don't want it doing that right in the background so you can deny apps from doing that unless they're open kind of a cool little feature so it's going to go ahead and allow now that's going to happen no matter what you're using whenever an app asks for one of those important permissions you'll get that so kind of a cool thing and and you're going to want to be able to control those right so if we go back into settings i'm actually going to go into that privacy section i showed you so this new section there's some other stuff in here we'll talk app permissions but this has a control for on your lock screen what you want your notifications to look like on there uh, you'll find autofill service in here now autofill service used to always be one of the hardest things to find and in fact i couldn't tell you where to find it on pi but now it's in the privacy section on q which is uh, very handy so we'll go into permissions uh, the layout of app permissions actually looks about the same in q until you just dive into one so if i go into camera you now have a section for allowed and a section for denied and to show you the difference here we'll swipe up and we'll go into the pi setup here so uh pi setup here's camera uh the difference here is, is is pretty obvious here you just have toggles for on off whether you can access permission that that could be confusing to people so the new version says look these ones can access your camera these ones can't rather than this toggle uh, if you want to change one you just tap on it and go ahead and allow or deny it so pretty straightforward stuff but uh, it's just one of those ideas that google's going with uh, to try to make things look uh, a little more simple uh, the next thing i want to show you though is app info pages so if i long press on an app and we go into the app info page so let's uh get the camera up here as well so in app info pages just the layout has changed a little bit i also enjoy the fact that they added an open button i can't tell you how many times i've been in an app info page and wanted to open the app right away and wasn't able to so that's changed uh the other layout has changed a little bit and notifications are actually telling you how many notifications you're getting uh per week or based on a certain amount of time whereas over here it's not telling me that uh but the layout from there doesn't really change much um, that up top section is kind of all that's new there. So that's kind of the differences we're finding so far. And Q is just these little like menu changes and things like that. Uh, one thing Google is telling us though, is that the share menu should be much faster. So if I go like to Droid Life and I go to an article and let's say I want to share that. So if I go ahead and share, it now pops up and it's like ready to roll and it's supposed to be fast. I, you'll know what I'm talking about if you've used one of Google's phones in the past where you tried to share something and it just took forever to load that whole thing. Now, I don't have a lot of apps installed, so that could be partly why that's fast, but they're telling us 
this is much faster now so um, anyways look forward to that um, in terms of notifications up there this might just be a minor thing but one thing i noticed is if you want to dismiss something now you can't swipe it that way anymore um, if i do like a big swipe you'll see it won't get rid of that it only gives me my snooze option or no longer show notifications from that if i want to actually swipe something away i have to swipe it that way uh, on on the regular Pixel 3 on Pi, I can swipe either way. And I can just do like a little half swipe to get into that menu. But now, yeah, if you do a swipe that way, it won't it won't dismiss it. I don't know if that's a big deal or not, but it's just something I noticed. Uh, some other little changes here. Um, and these are really not big, but uh, these are just subtle UI things we notice. So up top, you can see if I've got the, uh, the swipe down once on the notification area. Up top, I've got battery percentage and date. Uh, some status bar icons are also showing in queue up there, like Wi-Fi and and some of those. And in in order to see those on uh, on this, you have to look at the next row down. Does that make sense? Again, not a huge change, just sort of something I've noticed. Um, if you do want to talk about some bigger stuff, well, if we go back into settings, uh, one thing I will show you is in uh, display. So display, some things have changed in here. Number one, probably because this is an early Q build, the theme is option is gone. So the light or dark or based on wallpaper option, that's just not here anymore. My guess is that Google is actually going to finally do a night mode or full dark mode. And they probably pulled all that stuff out until it's fully ready and we'll see it in a later build. So right now that's gone. However, there is a new lock screen section. Uh, so rather than ambient display section, you now have a full lock screen section that has your always on toggle and your double tap and lift to wake and all that stuff and then some more lock screen um, controls up here so kind of separated out they've just moved them around a little bit uh, if we back out though so like you know like battery and sound and storage like none of these have really changed much uh, security this hasn't really changed much either these are all mostly the same your digital well-being section still the same as it is on older phones um, where we will find some new stuff though is in developer tools. So if you enable developer tools, if you haven't done this, you go into about phone and tap on the build number a whole bunch of times until it calls you a developer. And then you back out one and go into system and hit advanced and then you have developer options. Uh, before we dive in there though, I'll just show you gestures there. There are no new gestures yet in queue, uh, but developer options. So if we just kind of scroll all the way to the bottom, this is where we've stumbled into some cool stuff. So first thing I'll show you is this section at the bottom called theming. So this could mean that there's some theme ideas on the way, maybe a dark mode, maybe just some other color options. So if I go accent color, I can actually choose a different accent color. So I could choose like purple. And then all that blue color I had changed to purple. So I've got purple colors everywhere. Like these things could go away and this could just be something Google's toying with, but we do have a couple of you know color options here. And there's black. Now that's not a night theme, that is just a black accent color. So don't get too excited there. And there's the device default. Um, there's a couple other options here like icon shape, but these aren't new. You could you could change these from the desktop previously. Um, if we scroll through here, though, there are a couple of things that uh, have me at least interested, although I can't get them to work right now. So one is this option to enable freeform windows and one is to force desktop mode. So desktop mode, we're assuming, well, it says force experimental desktop mode on secondary displays. I'm assuming that's some sort of way to get your display to show up on a secondary display or and maybe flip into some sort of desktop mode. Uh, I'm not totally sure on that, but it's there as a toggle. I couldn't get it to work. I plugged it into a monitor. Uh, freeform Windows, however, if you swipe this up and you tap on this option here as if you wanted to go into split screen, there is a freeform option there. But if you tap on that, it doesn't do anything. It must be broken or I don't know how to work it either way. Uh, if you tap on freeform, it just kind of loads the app and uh, there's no way to like move it or drag it around. So anyways, that's in there. So we're seeing some kind of cool stuff in there in the developer tools. Outside of that, Android Q will have foldable phone support, which we know is a big deal at the moment. There's a whole bunch of support for new audio and video codecs. Uh, the camera will be able to dynamically capture depth and things like that. I mean, there's some other stuff in the background. Um, there's better biometric scanning at a system level, including using your face. So Android's adopting things and, and growing as, as a platform, which is, you know, fantastic. Uh, for now, though, there, there's not a lot of new, really exciting stuff for us to show you, unfortunately. Uh, but this is the first beta release. So there's plenty more. There could be four or five more after this. And uh, as those new changes roll in, we'll be sure to let you know. For now, though, we are uh, Droid Life. Peace.